tonight's public hearing to order. Tom Chapa. Here. Heather Del Conte. Here. Pamela Dowd. Here. Lisa Glidden. Here. James McKenzie. Here. Sean Ahmed. Here. Linda Serino. Here. Zachary DeMont. If you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'll turn the meeting over to Dr. Calvin for his presentation. Good evening, everyone. Great to see everybody back this evening. And tonight, for the first part of our, our uh, meeting here, we're going to have our, our budget hearing. We just want to share information about this year's budget. We've, we've uh, taken all the information that the board has given to us, and we have put everything together. And now we'd like to share it with our public, our community. Uh, so we'll start and go through the budget. And if there are questions from community members, certainly we will open the floor to, ask, or to answer those questions. So first, um, we'd like to uh, start out by, if I can turn the screen here, just uh, sharing some celebrations about our district. So a lot of great things are happening in Oswego uh, City School District, and as we move forward, we certainly want to continue many of the wonderful things that are taking place. And just in terms of celebrations this year, a couple of great things have occurred. One, we've been able to continue to meet the threats that maybe have been related to the pandemic. Uh, we've been able to keep our community moving forward, even through the challenges that this year has brought, and we are looking forward to doing the same in the next uh, school year. We have provided a very strong educational program for our students. Um, we believe that there is some place for every student uh, across the plethora of courses that we offer here in the district. Um, whether we have students who are just taking the Regents Track courses or AP courses or dual college courses, we have something for everyone. Uh, and, and our goal is to continue the strong uh, educational programming that we have been offering for our students. We provided additional mental health supports this year. Uh, for students. Uh, coming back from the pandemic, we know that there are students who certainly have come into school with a number of challenges uh, that are pandemic uh, related and mental health related. And uh, so we've provided additional supports and in the next year, our goal is to maintain those supports and to add wherever we possibly can for our students. Uh, we've provided a robust athletic, music, and extracurricular program for our students. Um, we have students who uh, just have a array of uh, programs that they can participate in and we're very proud of those uh, programs that have been able to come back this year after two years of kind of being on hiatus um, uh, it's, it's just been great to see kids back involved in athletics in our music program in drama in extracurricular programs uh, it's just been great to see our kids back and we continue to move the district forward strategically so we do have a strategic plan that's at the forefront of our thoughts and what we are doing as a district and uh, we have I'm proud to say that we are moving forward in those strategic uh, efforts. So just as a reminder in terms of our strategic plan, you know, our mission continues to be to educate, to inspire, to empower all of our students. Our, our vision is to ensure that we are an innovative, high-performing district that graduates every one of our students. And, and in doing so, we certainly keep in mind our core beliefs, each of those belief systems that are certainly uh, there on our screen. Also, as a part of our a strategic plan, we really have four tenets that are really critical that we continue to focus on each and every day. The first is engage. Our goal is to ensure rigorous, aligned, and relevant curriculum and instruction, um, and uh, that we deliver exceptional learning experiences for our student. The second tenet is support, that we address students' diverse social, emotional, and academic needs. Uh, and in doing so, that we would expand and provide uh, supportive structures that improve the achievement of all of our students. The third tenet is partner, that we would develop strong relationships with our students. And in doing so, we would also nurture and grow parent Im involvement and our community partnerships. And then the last tenet of the strategic plan is that we would build. And in doing so, we would optimize the efficient use of district resources, and we would develop and maintain long-range plans that address budget, operations, facilities, personnel, and programs. So again, the four tenets, engaging, supporting, supporting excuse me, partnering, and building. 
And this year, as we have uh, put together the budget with uh, guidance, support, and feedback of the board, our goals have been uh, really broken down into five different categories. First, we wanted a budget that would be fiscally sound, not excessive to our taxpayers. Second, we wanted a budget that would be flexible, that would provide for flexibility within budget codes. A budget that would be foolproof, providing for emergencies should they occur, flowing, meaning that they would have enough, the budget would have enough cash flow available in case there's some kind of a state uh, aid with, withholding uh, or some kind of you know, issue that uh, might occur, and then that our budget would be aligned, that it uh, has proper programming and supports included that are aligned with our strategic goals and our strate strategic plan as a district. And so now we're gonna go right into the tenets or the parts of our budget, the different components. So just a couple highlights um, from the 22-23 budget. Um, first highlight is that this budget uh, does present a 0% tax levy increase. It does maintain current levels of programming that we've kind of just talked about a little bit here. It maintains additional instruction, uh, you know, instructional and support staff that we have added um, over the last school year. This budget offers additional programs and opportunities for our students. For example, uh, you know, there's been a lot of conversation around adding intramural uh, activities for kids and also dual college credit courses. The budget maintains mental health supports, counselors, support workers, et cetera. The budget is also tax cap compliant, so it does meet with those tax, tax cap, uh, uh, that criteria um, uh, so that we certainly would not have to, uh, you know, um, uh, have any challenges around tax cap compliancy. And then um, the budget also provides more administrative support uh, for the district moving forward. So we're gonna get into now our total budget uh, and we'll talk now about the revenue and the appropriations. And to assist us with that, Nancy, we'll have you just kind of go over uh, the total budget there. So our proposed budget revenue for the 22-23 school year is $98,874,237, which is an 8.5% increase over the current year budget. The appropriations are $97,169,76, which is a 6.6% 6 .6 increase over the current year budget. We are also showing a revenue surplus of $1,000,000, $713,261. Now, this year, we wanted to be very clear with the public. Um, you know, the, the budget is a little bit more than what it probably normally would be by about 3.3%, which is a $3.3 million increase. And that is really attributed to, attributed to the emergency uh, soil project, which is a one-time situation. It's not something that we should see every year in the budget. It's only a one-time thing. So if people are watching this, we want to be very clear. It's a one-time increase. Uh, and I'll have Nancy kind of just go through the slide with us on this, please. Certainly. So during the capital project over in the old Wilberfield area, um, contaminated soil was found. Uh, that soil was remediated through the capital project, and at the onset of it, it was $5.7 million. Uh, actual costs have come in at $3.3 million, which is um, much better than the original estimate. We are slated to get 88.2% of state aid back in one year, which is next year. And we also have to use that money, so it's coming in as revenue, and we also have to have a corresponding expenditure um, in as an inner fund revenue or inner fund transfer back over to the capital, um, capital fund. And the difference between what we get from state aid and what the cost of the project is, is the local share, which is estimated to be $386,864 for next year. And again, we want the public to hear loud and clear that this is a one-time increase uh, that we uh, will be going through, so you shouldn't see this in future budgets. We, we don't believe there'll be any other emergency soil projects, <laughs> so this is a one-time piece here, okay? All right, so every budget has to it three different components. Our budget has the emergency soil piece in it, but also there are three different parts, the administrative portion, the capital portion, and the program portion to our budget. And I'll have Nancy go through those portions, please. Mm -hmm. So our administrative budget is composed of salaries, equipment, contractual lines, BOCES, and supplies. The total proposed budget 
for the administrative portion is $9,267,350, which is a $777,029 change from the current year budget. Capital? The capital budget is where you're going to see the inner fund transfer back over um, from the capital or from, excuse Emergency. me, from the soil, rem, um, soil project. And it is composed of salaries, equipment, contractual, BOCE, supplies, debt service, which includes principal and interest. And again, the inner fund transfer back to capital for the uh, soil remediation project. Total capital budget for the 22-23 school year is $15,027,115, which is a dollar change of $2,988,387. Okay, and this is the program portion of the budget. And the final part of our budget is the program budget, which is the largest piece of any school district's budget. It is comprised of salaries, equipment, contractual, BOCE, supplies, benefits, and interfund transfer, that is for our special education summer program. And that total is $72,866,511 of, um, which is $2,235,749 over our current year budget. So in terms of percentages, uh, when we look at the entire budget, those three parts, what you'll see is that 75% of our, our budget is really focused on program, which is really where it should be. The majority of the budget is focused on the programs that we offer for our students. And then 15.5% of our budget is focused on the capital portion of the budget, uh, the capital needs, and then 9.5% on the administrative needs for the overall um, budget, and or for the district, excuse me. In terms of uh, our tax uh, rates and levies. We, we have two slides here that we'd like to share, and the first deals with the tax rate, where we stand as compared to other districts. Nancy? Certainly. So this shows all of the tax rates of the school districts in, the in our county. Um, our, we are number three in the light blue area at 17.91 cents per thousand. Uh, the 21, 2021 state average is approximately 17.86 cents. Um, and that would equate to $2,679 of tax on a $150,000 home. <coughs> Oswego's full value tax on that same value is $2,687.13. So we are third in the county on the tax rate. And this is information that if folks would, from the public would like to, to learn more about, Recently, we had Dr. Rick Timms in, and he shared this exact slide with the same information. And certainly, you can go back and view that information on video on our, our, our uh, Buck TV page as well, WBUC page. In terms of the tax levy um, for our district, what you'll see is that our tax levy has actually remained flat for the last three years. And I'll, let, I'll have Nancy talk about that slide, please. Certainly. So this is a history of the tax levy information. The two large spikes that you see are when we were, uh, when the nuclear power plants fell off of the tax um, tax levy, and we had to include that in there. But as you can see, over the last three years, the tax levy has remained relatively fat, flat at twenty six million six hundred and forty three thousand four hundred forty eight dollars. Now, there are some basic STAR um, school tax relief program uh, tax savings that are, you know, that, that folks should know about from our community. And I'll have Nancy talk a little bit about that savings to basic STAR. Certainly. So there are three factors that determine the tax rate. It's the tax levy, the equalization rate, and property assessments in the uh, municipalities. And the current proposed uh, basic star savings for this year is 520, or for next year rather, is $522. So th that's our budget information, but folks should also know a couple of really important pieces of information in terms of uh, our polling sites. Um, we have uh, four different sites uh, this year, and we have one that's actually a new polling location. 
Um, the first one is district number one, and it covers wards number 10, the town of Scriba, the town of Volney, Oswego City School District residents only, and the location is at the Scriba Fire Station. District number two is the new polling location. It covers ward two, wards four, and, and also six. And the new location for this polling site is the Chrysophilly Rink. District number three covers wards one, three, five, and seven. The location for this polling site is the Elam Grace Church. And then district number four covers ward number eight, which includes the town of Mineto and Ward 9, town of Oswego, Oswego, excuse me, Oswego City School District residents only. The location is at the Oswego Town Hall. Can we have this put in the pal time like the day before? Yes, so um, we, we do have some um, information that our PR team is putting out in the local newspaper. We have a video that will be um, shared. Uh, we taped that yesterday, so that'll be out. I know Matt's doing all the editing on it. It should be out hopefully by tomorrow. Um, we have an actual newsletter that's going out to the public, and we have a Remember the Date flyer that's also going out that will have that information on it. Okay. For the Board of Education, we have two um, seats that will be up this year, and we have two uh, uh, people who are actually on the ballot. Uh, folks can vote for up to two people. Um, and those two candidates are David Crisofelli and Dr. Heidi Sweeney. In terms of uh, timeline information, our school budget vote is going to be on May 17th this year. It begins at 9 a.m. and then it ends at 9 p.m. Uh, and we encourage everybody to come out and take part in the vote. Are there any questions at all? Questions? All right, so with that said, uh, that is our public hearing for our, uh, our uh, Board of Education, uh, excuse me, our uh, budget for, uh, uh, that the Board of Education um, has, has put together along with the administration this year. Um, and we look forward to the vote coming up on May 17th. Okay. okay. At this time, could I have a motion for adjournment of the public hearing? I'll make the motion. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is call to order of the regular meeting. Tom Chapa? Here. Heather Del Conte? Here. Pamela Dowd? Here. Lisa Glidden? Here. Jim McKenzie? Here. Sean Ahmed? Here. Linda Serino? Here. Zachary Dema. At this time, I will open the floor to the public. I have one person that signed up, Mr. Ekman, if you could come to the mic. State your name and address. My name is Jim Ekman. My address is 113 County Route 1A, Oswego, New York. Okay. You signed up to speak tonight? I didn't realize that's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the question I do have is how do you get on the agenda to speak? I do have a, a series of things. I was the assistant coach at the wrestling at the high school this year. And I have several things that concern me that I want to bring to the attention of the board before the start of next year. And I need to figure out how to get that information to the board. I would say the best thing to do if it has to do with a particular staff member is to send that information to my office and then I can share that with the board. Um, it's, it's one of the things that we don't do at the board meeting is talk about a specific staff member. So if it's a specific staff member issue, then that should probably come directly to my office or the HR office. And then we can certainly share that with the board. Um, that probably, that's the best strategy or way to do that. All right, how do I make that happen? Just put it down in writing and send it to my office. I can do that. All right, All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is board, the Board of Education, items A through E, if I could have a motion. Move it. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? I'll... I guess I just wanna, call to people's attention if they don't go on board docs and see about the change to the instructional calendar. I mean, I'm sure it'll go out through Parent Square, but um, just to be aware. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is the superintendent's report, Dr. Kelvin. 
Good evening again, board. I'm having a little trouble here with this board, but I'll figure it out here. Uh, so tonight, my comments are very brief. I just have a couple uh, different uh, students that I'd like to congratulate. Um, and uh, I would like to start out first with this year's uh, inductees to the National Honor Society and, the, and also the National Junior Honor Society. We had an opportunity to celebrate with those students as they were inducted into both of those societies uh, just a week ago. We would like to congratulate all of those students. Job well done. We can give them a round of applause. Congratulations to all of those students. Also, like to congratulate this year's valedictorian and salutatorian for the class of 22. Uh, the valedictorian this year is Mary Kate Clunan, and also uh, the salutatorian is Caitlin Nettles. Both uh, very hardworking students who uh, have done a great job, and we'd like to congratulate them as well. If we give them a round of applause. We also would like to congratulate the staff, our students, our community on a really well done career day uh, activity that was taking that took place recently at the Fitzhugh Park School. Uh, we had a number of community partners who came in, supported our students, provided booths and, and different areas for kids to go and rotate amongst and learn about careers even at um, their early age. It was really great to see our kids connecting with community members and just talking about what they want to be when they grow up. It was just a great activity, and I would like to thank the principal, thank the coordinator of the event, uh, and uh, all of the students and the community members who came out. Thank you so much. And then I only have just two things that I'd like to share with the board. Um, I'll start with the, the latter first. Just want to let you know that we've been working really diligently on uh, different searches. Uh, the Director of Curriculum and Instruction uh, Search, we completed yesterday. We do have a candidate um, who is, I think, a, a really fantastic um, uh, candidate that we got. Uh, we are planning to have her on the next agenda, and hopefully she'll be here to say hello to the Board of Education. The Director of Human Resources uh, uh, piece ended today. We have another very strong candidate, so I'm, we're just really excited. We found two really great folks who I think will do some fantastic work here in our district. We're, we're working on now the Director of Special Education and Student Service piece uh, and the principal uh, piece for Fitzhugh Park School. It's going to take us a little bit longer. But we're still doing some screening uh, work, uh, and uh, we're going to extend that search a little bit. We just want to try to make sure we get a, a good number of applicants, and, and so we are we're working really diligently with respect to that one. The director of math search is still going. Uh, we had a couple people come in, but it wasn't quite right. The, the quite wasn't the right fit for us, so we're going to continue that search. We have a couple applicants that will be uh, screening this week, so we will let you know progress as things kind of continue to move forward. But we do expect to have a couple names to bring back for some of these different positions at our next meeting. Uh, and uh, great thing is that it'll give us some chance to do some cross-training as well with some of these positions. Okay. Um, and just um, another piece that I'd just like to share with the board, and we don't have to discuss it tonight, but maybe something that we may want to come back to. We um, in terms of playgrounds, so as we've kind of uh, moved forward as a district, um, you know, you saw the, the graph that had the different, you know, times we had some really challenging times. And so we had to kind of prioritize, you know, as a district, um, some of the things that monies were spent on, right? Uh, and one of the things that we've done, I would say, in terms of history, it looks as if for as long as, as most people can remember, uh, in terms of playgrounds, of playscapes, that uh, what happened was the public kind of raised the monies for those, right? So you, you kind of prioritize what you need as a district in terms of your budget, and then uh, the public goes out and, and they've done the playground piece, basically. So we've had different um, uh, playground outcomes, I, I would say. We have some schools that have, have um, been able to raise money, and, and lots of money, for playgrounds. And then we have others, uh, depending on where you're, where you're at in the city, that just haven't been able to do that. We have reached out to a number of people. We have folks who are helping to fund you know, playgrounds. We've had people who have been writing grants and working with us quite diligently around uh, playgrounds. Um, but you know, it depends on the school that you're at. Some, some people are able to get more grants, and some are not. Um, we have some foundations who are in our area who are willing to give. However, you know, what they have said now to us is, or at least some of our folks, 
you know, we'd be willing to give, but we need to, we want to see you all kind of do some giving towards it as well. So there's a match. Is that right? We, we would get match what you do, but we're not sure if we can just kind of do it all. Um, you know, as we're going through a pandemic, um, or coming to the endemic stage, you know, there are various organizations that do need funds out there. So there's been some, some um, uh, conversations around that. And um, one of the things that, you know, has been asked of me is, you know, is there something the district may want to do around this? Um, so when I came to the district, Nancy will uh, tell you, and she's probably looking at me like, don't do it, but it's all good. We, we talked about playgrounds extensively because there is a disparity. At one side of the district has more when another side does not, right? And again, it depends upon who can raise from who cannot raise. Many districts actually include playgrounds in their capital improvement projects, and in doing so, they can ensure consistency uh, across the district. And uh, some of those efforts of trying to raise all the money, they, they alleviate some of that. Um, so I'm not sure which direction you'd like to go, but what I do want to share is that we do have some schools that are struggling with trying to um, build up their playgrounds, one of which is the, the Manetto campus. So they, they are in need of more specialized equipment um, because of the students that they service. Um, and it's a challenge to raise some of those bigger amounts for that specialized equipment. We do have some partners who are willing to help us, but they are certainly looking for us to try to help with that as well. So I guess what I'm saying is, in a near conversation, if we could, I'd love to engage in a conversation around um, how do we handle this disparity problem across the district? And is this something that the board would like for us to consider as we kind of move forward? Um, you know, we could, there, there are always, um, you know, um, leftover funds at the end of the year that may be something you may want to look at, that maybe we may want to plan for this in a capital improvement project, um, but there's something that, something to be said about us just kind of thinking this through a little bit because there are, there are some um, people who are definitely asking and having some concerns around the playgrounds and why aren't they all similar as you go across the district. You know, some people would say, well, what's playgrounds? You know, playgrounds are not just playgrounds. They're, it's, it's extended learning. That's where kids socialize. They connect with one another. Um, and some of the um, uh, physical education pieces are actually, believe it or not, very well connected to the playground experience. So I just wanted to share that. Thoughts from the board at all? Sir? No. Yeah, I, can I speak to where it sure. came from, or sure. Genesis? Um, someone who's on the, actually the Shinneman Foundation and working with Minetto had asked me about that as far as our commitment and our participation um, with it because they were looking at uh, a donation to, or a grant for that. And uh, I said, I'll ask because I had never, the question had never been presented before. So um, that's kind of like an immediate, or not immediate, but would have a decision we'd have to look at sooner than later. But it would be a great opportunity in our partnership um, partnershiping with stakeholders and people within in the district, and they are, have expressed an interest to to work with us um, to be a first step at that particular location to uh, either match funds or have that discussion at the next board meeting so we could move forward with it. Um, w with other schools you've worked with, mm -hmm. is this an anomaly? This is, I would say for, for me, yes. So I was at Stockbridge, um, you know, and Wayne, and we just um, covered the cost for the, for the playgrounds. We just, we just did them as a district. We put it into a capital project. That way you get aided for it, right? And it was just, again, the concern was making sure everybody had what was needed. And we, didn't, we, we had the parents focus on raising funds for other things, not, not this being the thing. More so like scholarships and whatever else have you, so. Yeah, I'll admit it. I, this was a huge surprise to me, and I've been involved in some of these playground fundraising efforts, but I thought it was supplemental. I didn't realize that parents were solely responsible for funding the playground. And so I think it's kind of a macro example of what we're trying to fix um, when it comes to fundraising, like, you know, part, part of our, um, the reason we have kind of put a halt on some class trips is because some kids come from homes that can't fundraise as well as other mm -hmm. kids. And so this is kind of like a, a community level of that same problem. So I definitely hope we can look to figure out how we can, as a district and with partners, community partners, um, remedy the situation. 
And I was gonna say the other opportunity here is some of our parks are public parks at the mm -hmm. schools. They're not our, on our property, correct? Mm -hmm. So, so not no, all. they're not all, they're both, they're a mix. So would that not be an opportunity for us to work with a foundation and the city and our own funds to be able to look at a more comprehensive plan for the whole district? Out of curiosity with those um, mixed parks or mixed playgrounds, who insures them? So they're city properties, so it's likely that the city insures them. I think so. The city insures yeah. those. So Which if one of our students city? is hurt on the playground equipment, so we still have some. It? We still have some um, responsibility in those cases, um, uh, but I believe the majority of the insurance piece. And Nancy, you, you can tell me more. Yeah. Liability. Liability. Mm -hmm. We've had that issue before. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Playgrounds are not just school districts. Kingsford, do we know? Kingsford Park. Uh, there's some of the beginning. Fitzhugh, right? You want to? I think at no, Fitzhugh Park. Fitzhugh. There is uh, some of that at the top of the school. Uh, there's some. There's some of that area that belongs to the city. I don't think all of it does. Nancy, no, that's, ours. Ours. that's ours. That's so, ours. So park. everything on Fitchu is ours. The only Who's property there? that I'm aware of is Kingsford Park. Okay, thank you. My apologies. I stand to be approved. Mm -hmm. okay. And I would just add, um, prior to being on the board, I've done quite a bit with playgrounds. And <laughs> however, um, I would say that the um, there's also like the playground equipment and playscape, like it really does, like it, it's a learning place. Mm -hmm. um, there are, there's actually funding for like outdoor classroom spaces, mm -hmm. which um, would be possible. Um, but in addition to that, there are certain kinds of playground equipment that you can do occupational therapy or even um, physical therapy, physical therapy mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So um, there really are, there's a lot out there um, that we can, we can do with this. Yeah, I don't really think we can, with a straight face, fund the stadium we have and not fund elementary school playgrounds. I mean, it is the same value, right, in terms of a place of learning using our yeah. physical bodies. Mm -hmm. So if the board would like, we can gather some information and come back and have a discussion, even more in depth with the board, and then just kind of work, this, work through this one step at a time. Does that sound good to further the conversation and come back and have some more discussion on it? And in the interim, we will reach out to the, the foundation that has, has already reached out to us and just try to have some preliminary conversations with them about this. Um, and we'll go from there. Does that sound good? All right. All right. So with that said, that's all I have this evening. Um, unless there's any other questions at all. Okay. Well, at this, <laughs> at this point, the questions really go with the, with the board. Um, but do you want to take a question? If you want to stick around for the meeting, you can ask a question right after the meeting if you'd like. Okay. 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 All set. Next Thank on you. the ag agenda is the consent agenda, items A through D. Could I have a motion? Move it. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Next is personnel with Peter Miles. Hello, personnel, professional staff recommendations A through F as presented. Items A through F, motion please. Move it. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Support staff recommendations G through K as presented. Items G through K, motion please. I'll move it. Second. Second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. And lastly, uh, L, substitute and temporary employees as presented. Items L, could I have a motion please? I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second it. Any discussion? I just have to reiterate, it is so nice to see our former students coming back and starting out on our sub list. So I always have to point out. Yay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Next is finance with Nancy Squires. A through C as presented. Items A through C, could I have a motion please? 
Move it. Second. Second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Next is the student representative discussion. Um, Zachary's not with us tonight, so items from the board. Would any board members have any items tonight? <laughs> Pam. Uh, <laughs> it is Teacher Appreciation Day oh, slash week, but today is the day. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our teachers out there and our teacher assistants because they are right up there too. And their aides, the teaching aides. So thank you all. We certainly appreciate you. Tom and Lisa, do you guys want to report on the yeah. program you yeah. went to? Do you want to? Uh, yeah, Lisa and I went to the Oswego uh, County School Boards Association uh, Arts and Education Night. Uh, and it was a great, it was a great presentation. There was someone there from Central New York Arts uh, in Fulton and also uh, from BOCES. And they presented, uh, and it's William Jones presented the arts and education program uh, from there. And it's a wonderful program that I don't think we're utilizing enough. And he presented that, uh, he had great data. He could pull right up on his phone which districts were utilizing programs and uh, which down to which school was utilizing programs. And it, we, we were thinking about it and, and Lisa and I were talking about it. And it's a program that we should, should and could utilize more because it's uh, reimbursable at a very high rate. Um, do you remember what the rate was, Lisa? Not do you remember? Top of my no, it's about 80. It's, eight, it, it's something it's all, in the 80s. Yeah, 80 to 90 percent. Mm -hmm. And so, one of the things that he mentioned was in order in the, in the districts where it's really being utilized and it's throughout the whole district, they usually have one person that works as a point person as a catalyst and make sure it's being, people are aware of it and can help them uh, access and navigate it. It's a very simple uh, application process though. He said it's down to a single page application. But it would be a great way to utilize it in the district completely and to take full advantage. I'd like to have him come present to us sometime. He said he'd be more than willing to if, if the board would like to, to yeah, see that. I would just add to it um, what made my ears perk up is it can be used for field trips, So, um, which would be a way to get field trips back. Um, so what exactly is it? Is the program? It, well, it basically helps access, at, at least the way he presents. Mathis, do you want to? Yeah, so it's basically it's like a BOCES code. No. no you gotta do that. Basically, it's a BOCES course, sir. Um, so they offer a plethora of services or, or shows or activities um, and events. Um, and then we sign up for some, so many of these events. We do um, utilize this support. I know Ryan does. I believe I went, to, uh, I saw a show at Layton not too long ago, about three weeks ago. There was this huge acrobatic show uh, piece. Yeah, Our principals either. do reach out to us and let us know what they want. It's like a catalog of things that you can do. So we do have a point person already. Mm -hmm. Our people do that with the principals, but it is a great coaster. It does allow you to get some arts and activities uh, into the school, you know, um, assemblies for kids that they can see, some really great things that are happening, um, you know, through that coaster. So, yeah. It is something that we're utilizing. Um, can we always grow with it? Absolutely, right? Um, is it something that we, if you all would like to have a presentation on it, we certainly can bring that to you, no problems. Sure, that's great. And one of the things, Lisa, correct me if I'm wrong, but he said it could work for robotics and in different areas, not necessarily so streamlined just to the arts programs, but right. there's other programs we can utilize it for. Yeah, it's much broader than I thought. Yeah. Okay, we can, we'll reach out to the coaster group and bring them and let them say hi to everybody. Sound good? You know, along those same lines, it's almost the end of the year. I'd like to know, um, this is our first year doing Rachel's Challenge. I'd mm -hmm. kind of like to know how that went and um, sure. yeah, the effect of that. Okay. I also want to congratulate the Ag Club on their successful hatch of chicks, which a lot of people caught on the webcam and was very exciting. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it was very exciting. Okay, well, that's it. Oh, I just got one thing real quick along the lines of kind of a wish thing. Um, we I've seen an internal memo that we're starting to do some of the fall coaches. And with the addition of intramurals next year, I'm hoping we can start to have some talk and some movement on what that's going to happen in the fall for that. 
you know, because once some people leave for the summer, it's kind of hard to organize. So if we can start organizing that early, we've been talking about this for the two years I've been on the board. I was talking about it with previous boards that really the what we're doing now. So I'm, I'm very glad to see it. But a lot of times the conversation, well, I won't say well, some of the times the conversation went to facilities. You know, mm -hmm. do we have the gym space in allotted times to increase this? And to me, the fall and the spring in particular, being able to get people outdoors, that is a time we can really increase things. So I would like to see us get really out in front of a fall intramural and how we can increase that because I feel is if we wait until August or September that we might be a little bit behind to implement it and then we're hitting yeah. up against the winter and everybody back inside. Right, so that's just kind of something I would like to see us talking about in the next, you know, well, before the end of the school year. So, my thoughts. We can start working on that and we can bring to you what, what we have. Um, that normally starts getting planned, um, well, really, between now and, and the summertime. Uh, we are in the process of hiring the new athletic director right now, uh, so that person will certainly be instrumental in, into this. So, but we'll bring you what we have and then we'll bring you back to, as, we can, as we kind of move forward towards the, the um, beginning of the school year. We'll work on that and share with you throughout the summer. Okay, all right, okay, great. Okay, okay. At this time, would the board need an executive session? I do not have anything for executive tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's so disappointed, I almost think we should. <laughs> Look at Linda's so disappointed too. <laughs> All right, let's quickly Could, adjourn then. <laughs> Could I have? We need, we need a motion. Could I have a motion for adjournment, please? Uh, yes, I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> second. And there's a second. All in favor? Yay. Aye. Opposed? You may adjourn. Dinner is served. <laughs>